I came into filmmaking almost by accident. I'm a composer and trained in music, and I didn't have any particular interest in the mechanics of filmmaking. I began music lessons pretty early on trumpet and piano. I studied music all through junior high and high school and um, became more aware of uh, how music played such a big part in, in films, and particularly foreign films. And uh, I got really into Godard and Bergman and Fellini in high school and um, I noticed I, uh, how important uh, you know Nina Rota's score is to eight and a half and uh, and that's just a small example I think the biggest uh, uh, impression for me was the umbrellas of Cherbourg and uh, I was 16 and my parents uh, showed me that movie and I, I watched it um, all weekend and um, I just uh, I thought it was the most terrific thing ever and uh, I loved the m movie and I loved the music obviously and I, I so although I continued to write music and study music uh, there was always a thing in the back of my mind like well it would be it would be great to make my own movie for my music after high school I studied with Philip Glass and worked for him in New York City and came back and uh, studied philosophy at Pasadena City College because it was then that I was very interested in Peter Greenaway's uh, films, and particularly The Cook, The Thief. And I loved how Peter Greenaway used, and still uses, uh, music in his movies, and in particular Michael Nyman's scores. And um, I, w I was just fascinated by how well it worked together, and I really was uh, interested in um, how directors worked with composers, you know, how Woody Allen would choose big band music and um, and that would be, or swing music rather, and that would be very powerful and effective, at least at least for me. Um, but I kept writing music. I went to USC and, and majored in composition there and um, had a lot of music lying around. Not very marketable music. Um, it's, it, I loved it and my friends liked it and my family liked it and you know but it was it was um, it, it's quirky and and bold and not uh, bland which is good and bad so um, I had all this music lying around a lot of it was rejected from different film projects and student projects and stuff like that rightly so it just didn't fit I guess so I, I sort of thought well maybe I have to write my own movie for my music to fit and there was a Jackie Gleason song that really inspired me to make a movie about LA. Then I started writing a script that was for my for these pieces of music that I that I had. Not that I thought it would be easy, but I thought that well there was nothing I could lose. We did a Kickstarter campaign, but uh, Armin Hargit was the producer on that film. I found a terrific cinematographer, Danny Belinky, who's a good friend as well. Also found Rob Herring, who I met through a friend. Uh, he went to NYU and he's an actor and a director and uh, the three of us really bonded well and Rob uh, directed Nothing in Los Angeles with me. It was really fun being in it, shooting it, mostly for me editing it and scoring it was was really the, the post work was the most fun because I could, uh, I knew that if a scene was gonna drag or not be very you know, I didn't have confidence in my writing, uh, in my prose. Uh, I knew that I could perhaps save a scene by putting music into it or something like that. You know, because music can always enhance enhance the moment and stuff. So I sort of had that to fall back on. Nothing in Los Angeles came about, um, and we did about a year of festival circuits, including Cinequest, which was a very big honor for us. And through that uh, festival promotion, I continued to write music and scripts at the same time. So I would be up uh, writing scripts and then go downstairs and play piano and uh, write for a scene and, and work on a scene. And if I got too tired or something, then I would go down and, and work out the scene musically somehow. And, um, and I enjoyed that, uh, that sort of working at the same thing, you know. 
And so I wrote a second script, Show Business, which is the one we are talking about now, which is available now on iTunes and Amazon. And it's a uh, screwball comedy. Bonnie Hargett produced this movie. And uh, Armin Hargett was the executive producer. And um, Danny Belinky shot it. Again, most of the music was written sort of at the same time I was writing it and editing it. So while I was editing the film, I could use pieces of music that... Uh, that I thought would work when I was writing it, but then didn't. So I would use something from maybe 10 years ago, or I would just have to come up with something else. But I liked that because I, I, was, I, I knew exactly how I wanted this scene to um, be heard, sort of. And uh, I've always thought I, uh, I, I never really wanted to compose music for movies. I wanted to compose movies. And um, I hope that doesn't sound pretentious or I hope it makes sense. Uh, I'm not even sure what it means. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this, and uh, thank you very much to Film Courage for allowing us to be on your wonderful website, and uh, I really appreciate all the support, and uh, watch show business. It's very funny, it's short, it doesn't won't take that long. I think it's 80 minutes. Um, and uh, it's, it's funny, and it's uh, romantic and touching, and uh, has good music to it. So uh, thank you very much.